Hey YouTube, Audi Olympian here bringing the sound and video to you today, coming to you from the Coliseum. Okay, today's Coliseum Battleground video is going to be talking about subwoofers, one of my favorite subjects and favorite products and items that I have in my home theater. So we'll get right into that video here in a second. If this is your first time visiting our channel, we want to welcome you. Thanks for stopping by. If you found this video informative or even entertaining, if you could hit that like button, we'd really appreciate the support. Okay, so Golden Ear Force Filled Subwoofers. I have right here with me the three and the five. I also do have the four, but that's up in my system. Uh, I just wanted to specifically talk about these two right here. This is the uh, entry level model and then their flagship model for the Force Filled Subwoofers. Now, are these underrated subs, average subs, or are these powerhouses? You can decide. We're gonna talk a little bit about the pros and the cons of both of these subwoofers, or this subwoofer line, I should say. Let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the cons first, which there isn't too many of those, or I wouldn't maybe necessarily say a con, maybe just a few little things that I didn't care for on uh, these two specific models. Starting with the Force Field 3 here, this is the entry-level subwoofer priced at $549, which I think is a really good price for it here. 1,000 watts, 8-inch woofer. The downside here, because of the cabinet size and it's lightweight, I mean, it is very, very stable. When you, when you knock on this box here, it's pretty dense. Um, has an 8-inch woofer and a passive radiator underneath it. So if you're not familiar with a model like that, what the passive radiator does is it allows for a subwoofer in a smaller cabinet like this to be able to have more impact and reach lower frequency because it can move more air through the passive radiator, whereas um, normal subwoofers, to be able to reach down to those low hertz, they need to be really big boxes. So the passive radiator designs allow for a subwoofer to be able to push more air in a smaller box. Sometimes they're, uh, this one is underneath, but sometimes they're either on top or they're on the sides of the speaker and they could be multiple passive radiators in the design as well, or it could be exactly on the opposite end, inertially balanced on the opposite side of the active driver. Um, all the force filled uh, line of subwoofers for Golden Air do have passive radiators. And actually including their um, super subs which I have another video coming out specifically on those two models there. So one of the things I really didn't care for on this Force Field 3 is because it packs so much power, 1,000 watts in this little cabinet here, when it's really hitting and it's reaching those low frequencies, this thing is going to dance around your room. It is going to move. So if you have a hard surface floor, uh, you're going to see this thing start vibrating and moving across the floor when it's really hitting that, that powerful impact there. The good thing is, they come with these little rubber feet down here at the bottom, so you won't hear it. This really does help minimize the, the vibration transferring down to your floor, so you get more impact in the room and not down into the floor. Uh, so you won't hear it dancing around, but you certainly will see it. And if you have pets or anything that might draw attention to it, I have kids, and so anytime they see something moving, it certainly draws their attention. They want to go and touch and grab it. Another thing that I wouldn't really rate high on the rating scale for these subwoofers are the look of it. Now, it is good and kind of average at the same time. Good because it's very durable. You don't have to worry about this getting scratched up or nicked up or marked up, more like the piano gloss looks that are out there or any of those very shiny like speakers. Those are very nice. We all like those, or at least, you know, a good majority of people like having those. But those attract so much dust and scratches and fingerprints and you know a lot of those little annoying nuances that go with those finishes. They look amazing, but they constantly need care and cleaning. So it's good to have a speaker where you can just put it off to the side, not really worry too much about the finish or if it's gonna be getting scratched or you gotta dust it constantly here. So it does have a nice finish with that, very durable. However, it's not that exciting to look at. That's one thing I just, I like to have exciting looking speakers. Um, 
However, again, that could be that could go either way. You really, really like it or you don't really like it. It's pretty basic. Now, the good thing with that, though, is when you keep things basic, and I believe Sandy Gross, when he was developing these, really kept that in mind. Let's keep it basic, nice, but simple. That way you could keep the cost down for uh, consumers like you and I. This speaker here starts at 549 which I think is an amazing price for an 8-inch, 1,000-watt subwoofer that can dig really deep and shake into a pretty good size, you know, small to medium size room. You're really going to get some good impact in there. Uh, the Force Fail 4 is $799. That's your 10-inch cone. It looks exactly the same. It's just the middle brother here. And then the Force Fail 5 here is the 12-inch cone here. And that is, uh, the Force Field 4 is at 1200 rated at 1200 watts and then the force field 5 peaks at up to 1500 watts but I think um, on paper it's 1400 however I believe in a little bit of research that I did it's really RMS at about a thousand watts okay so that was again just talking about the look going over a few little specs here on these I know I'm kind of bouncing all over the place um, I'm just trying to remember everything get this video make it as short as possible and get the information out to anybody here so in my personal opinion, are these very good subwoofers? Absolutely, you cannot go wrong with them at all. I believe the Force Field 4 is the champion of the three. Um, packs enough power, has, has enough size to it. It's not gonna dance around your room. Definitely give you some low uh, frequency response in your room. If you got two of them, you're definitely gonna wake your neighbors up either early in the morning or really late at night. Uh, I think you're going to have a lot of fun with those. So let's get into the next area that I, I thought or I wish that they did something different with these subwoofers. Okay, so taking a look at the back here, it's got your basic um, subwoofer design here in the back where you have your low level input and your high level input. These are in the event uh, you're running a receiver or off of a preamp or something like that that doesn't have a subwoofer output. You can plug your main speaker cables into this and then from here your speaker cables will go out from here into your main front speakers. You'll bypass the subwoofer input here but you'll be able to have your powered subwoofer used in the system by going through the high level input here. Most people just use the low level because uh, most of the time your receiver or preamp will have a subwoofer out, a pre-out for your subwoofer here. The one thing that I wish they would have done would have been had uh, more outputs here so that if you wanted to connect more than one subwoofer. Now, I know a lot of people use Y splitters in that event, or in that case, you want to add multiple subwoofers. If your, sub, uh, if your receiver doesn't have two subwoofer outputs, uh, which a lot of them do have today, but for those of us that are really base heads, we like to have multiple, multiple subs. Right now in my theater room, I'm running, if I include my uh, Triton Reference Towers and my Triton 1Rs, which have powered subwoofers into them, and I do use the, the subwoofer input on those towers, I'm running six subwoofers in my room. All four corners, one in front center, one in back center. So three across the front, three across the back. I find that every time you use a Y splitter, I don't know, it might just be me, but I felt you, the signal always breaks down and it's not as strong. You're, you're still activating two powered subwoofers in there, but it's like they're getting half a signal each. And it just never had that full impact, at least from if I were to unplug it and then only use one subwoofer. It seemed like that single subwoofer always seemed to generate more impact and power, have more low frequency. I don't know, that might have just been me, but I always felt that. So I don't really like using Y splitters. I prefer if the subwoofers would have additional outputs that you can connect right from this sub to another sub. Hence like your RELs, uh, SVS subs are like that, which I have uh, one of each one of those. And I really appreciate that uh, feature there on the back of a subwoofer. So that was pretty much it as cons for the force field three here. So I would like to have seen some different colors and different options and colors here. 
Okay, so let's talk about the five. I really only had one issue with the force field five here. Uh, I was really excited to get it. I already had the three and the four. So when I got a chance to get this one here at a really good price, I think retails for $9.99, I picked it up for, I believe it was $5.50 maybe on the used market. Um, so I was really excited about getting that. I really wanted to hear it and add it into my system. It is about 1400, peaks about 1500 watts. In doing some research here, I found that it was really RMS at about 1000 watts. And I'm not really sure if this one is still even in production, so forgive me if it isn't. But if you get a chance to get one, if you come across it on the used market, I would jump on it if you can get it at a decent rate. Like I said, retail was about $1,999. I got mine for a little bit more than half of that. And let me tell you, that thing rocks. So the issue that I had with it when I originally got it, I placed it in the normal spot that I had for most of my subwoofers was over in the corner. And I was not happy with that one at all. It was very, very boomy. And it seemed kind of sloppy and not tight at all, especially compared to the three and the four, which I was used to those being a lot tighter, a lot smoother. And this one did get down deeper, but like I said, it was very boomy and it just didn't have a nice sound to it. And I thought, oh, I was not impressed with it. So I left it in that corner for a little while. Then one day I decided, let me move it around a little bit. So I changed the spot. I went from the corner to a little bit more away from the wall. I just actually pulled it out and the sound got better. It improved. It wasn't as boomy. And I thought, well, that was interesting. That was, that was kind of uh, impressive there. It started to sound a little nicer. So then I actually moved it far away from the wall, put it on the other side of my uh, entertainment stand where it's a little bit more centered in the room and I had about a good foot and a half away from the wall behind it, which is actually considered your front wall because you're looking at that wall, um, and totally changed the dynamic of it. And it was just rocking my house and I was very, very excited then. So the placement of the force field five is crucial. I do not recommend putting that one in the corner. The three and the four went well in the corner. You still always want to have good space around your corner anyway from your subwoofers. You don't want them nece necessarily directly against the wall. You want some more uh, space so you don't get that echoing you know, vibration off of the wall. Whereas that one, when I moved it out in more centered room, it changed the dynamic of it completely. I was totally shocked and floored. And now that speaker became excitingly fun for me to where I was watching clips of movies, you know, just nice explosion, loud, impactful clips that thump you in the chest for about 45 minutes, 30 seconds here, 40 seconds here, a minute and a half here, all kinds of movies that, that I like to watch. So that was the only thing I had with the five. So it's not your subwoofer where you can just go and stick in any room. If you don't have a good size room for that, I believe it's gonna be kind of boomy for your room. Brought it downstairs, totally changed the dynamic. That room is higher ceiling, more open, and uh, have a great, great effect on its frequency response there. Because of its size, you gotta have some good open space and you need to be able to have it far away from the things and the wall. So if you don't have a big room, that's probably not gonna be your best solution for you. Which brings me to the last point here, force field four, why I think that is the best one. 1200 watts, peaking at around 1200 watts, I'm believing that one's probably RMS around 8, 850 as well. Um, peaking up to about 1200 will definitely rock your house, give you some nice gut thumping uh, bass extension there. And that one is only uh, rated at $799, $799. But that's my take here on the Golden Ear Force Field line for subwoofers, you guys. I believe they're powerhouses, like I said. The 8-inch subwoofer starts at 549, and it is 1,000 watts, guaranteed to rock your house, but you're gonna wanna make sure that's on some carpet. Um, the Force Field 5 peaks up to about 1,500, 1,400 to 1,500 watts, but you wanna make sure you got some room in there. But if you really want the champion of the three, I believe that's the force field four. It can't go wrong. It can go in the corner. It can hide. It can be out in the uh, middle of the room. Guaranteed to rock your socks, you guys. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.